I'm Srikant, Academic Director of Vidyavanam. Uh, I've been with Vidyavanam for the last three years and uh, it's been an absolutely thoroughly enjoyable journey for me. Why did you choose to be the part of Vidyavanam? What was your interest and in intellectual invest on Vidyavanam? See, I didn't uh, actually, I was never in education. I started my career as a marketing and advertising professional. I worked for about 20 years in various companies. And suddenly one fine morning, I decided that I will throw up all that uh, corporate job and get into education. So when I got into education, by then Vidyavanam had already started. But my point was, without an experience in education, I cannot just walk into the school just because my mother happens to be one of the founder directors. So I joined a school in Chennai where I worked for about six years and then I felt I was ready. And so I thought I will come and help her run this institution. Okay, so after all these years, what is your learning experience from India? Well, uh, I, I, to say it in one small interview is going to be extremely difficult. Every single day is a learning for me. Every single day is exciting for me because every child is unique and Vidyavanam's philosophy is that every child is unique, every child is talented and to know and what to us is obvious is not obvious to the child. For example, for me, uh, uh, you know, something about a city mall is very obvious. But to these children who have not been exposed to their villages beyond probably the city that they've been exposed to as Coimbatore, to them a city mall is a wonderment, right? Similarly, for them environment is part of their life livelihood. When I went into class one day and spoke about environmental conservation and all the rest of it, the children laughed at me and said, Anna, we know all, the, all this, right? So to me that itself was a revelation, right? You're coming from a city environment into a, into a setup that is a semi-rural environment, then you, you're, you come up with all of this. Also the kind of thinking that goes on amongst the teachers and amongst the children, the traditional, their Certain things are traditional and certain things are conservative, but we never in Vidyavanam say this is right or this is wrong. We let the children do the thinking, we allow them to explore. That's the that's what you always emphasis on problem solving and critical yes, thinking. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, how do you design your curriculum in economy? See, um, while we say problem solving and uh, critical thinking. We don't say the curriculum has to be problem solving and critical thinking. You can take any curriculum for that matter and um, you know make the children think. If I take a CBSE syllabus, for example, let me give you an example from physics, for example. Now, uh, if you take, if I was teaching a physics class, the normal plug that we have here will not have a fuse inside, right? But there are some uh, uh, plugs in the Western countries which have a fuse inside. Now, if I open the normal plug and uh, if I just show the picture of the plug to the child and teach him the concept of the plug, then the child will not understand what this fuse is all about. Because tomorrow when he opens his, the plug in his uh, house, he will not find the fuse. But when, if I actually show it to him physically, right, and then make him think and ask questions, why is there a fuse here? What is the purpose of the fuse? Why should a plug have a fuse at all in the first place, yeah. right? These are questions that I throw out. I did one thing on circuits, right? So I drew the track, the uh, running track and I said, what is a circuit? So the sports people came up with a circuit is one round of the track. So I said, if I put uh, uh, hurdles in between, what does that mean? They said, it's an obstacle race. So I said, what are your resistors? They are all hurdles to the flow of current. So you brought in, I brought in a real life concept which they were interested in and added it into the physics. So it made it much more interesting for the child to learn. So in all the other kind of educational systems, why did you choose the Montessori method for the kids and the uh, team based learning for the elder ones? Yeah, the reason why we chose Montessori was because we felt that will uh, sort of suit Vidyavanam's philosophy. Uh, completely because it allows the child to explore, it allows the child to work with the hands, it allows the child to think, it allows the child to question, all of that, which is part of our Vidyavanam philosophy. As regards theme based learning, it is not a syllabus that sort of suddenly came about. We sort of evolved it from childhood, uh, from for many many years, 
uh, what we did was we took up a, a stone and then asked the child to feel this stone the roughness the smoothness then where all can the stone be used how will uh, how will you talk about the volume of the stone how will you talk about the weight of the stone so the entire theme sort of started evolving around this kind of thing so that's why when we came when as we grow higher and higher and go into more and more complicated uh, you know uh, themes it's easier for the child to connect so that's the that's why theme based learn, learning came about yeah you are um, repeating about the philosophy of yes Vidya. yes this is a, a basic fundamental the core fundamental philosophy on which vidyavanam functions is fearless learning fearless environment questioning critical thinking these are four pillars on which uh, vidyavanam is built right you came to that point well uh, see the point was when we are catering to a, a to a group of a community like this they've always been oppressed at some point of time so if i'm going to set up a school that says it's going to be like a military discipline and says you know i'm going to beat you or beat you if you do this then you will not have the children coming to school at all the children feel the safest here because they can walk into my room they can walk into party's room they can talk to party anything that they want right from their family problems right up to the school problems right so that kind of an uh, environment makes the children want to learn and unless you create that learning will not happen okay then uh, what do you think is practically possible for the public education system to adopt to their curriculum from the vidyavan model of education oh uh, well um, first of all the change in mindset of public education system secondly to not look at children as products but to look at children as individuals each and every child is an individual right it doesn't matter whether it's a vidyavanam child or whether it is another school child every child is an individual allow the child to explore allow the child to think allow the child to move beyond what has been provided in that curriculum is only a framework it's only a background that you're giving it's like any boundary you have a boundary wall here does not mean that i don't allow the child to look outside the window or look at the tree outside right it is the same principle so unless we are willing to adopt that kind of a thinking an open thinking open to the world it is not we are all working in pockets we are all working in individual pockets one school does it one curriculum does it one vidyavanam does this x school does this right we have to look at it as a collective and we are, if you are looking at a future generation of you know thinkers from our uh, society i think that's the way to go the interesting part is in the in the older system of education we've had so many fantastic thinkers come up in india but over the last 20 25 years you can count on your fingers the number of thinkers who've been brought out why that's a question that everybody has to ask themselves right and if they can find an answer to that question then i think the education system will evolve rather than making them like factory products i get into a lathe and i keep on making the same not 10000 times it makes no sense so like even our tamil english are uh, the kids speak fluently all these languages this multilingual syllabus bilingual syllabus how 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 do you came to that see what happened was uh in the junior classes especially up to about the third or fourth standard uh when we started talking in english see for them for the uh, community that speaks irula tamil itself is an alien language right and english is even more alien and even more complicated as a language tamil at least is a single tree in which there are branches english is a multiple of languages combined together so we thought that if the child can understand what is being said in class uh and can say to us in irula right what do i need as a teacher i need the child to understand what is being said that's all so we said we'll do that then we said we told the child okay you said this in urula now how will you express the same thing in tamil so when the child got that transition then i said okay now tell me in english how will you say it so slowly the fear of english started going again our pillar no fear zero fear so it it builds on that the fear of the language goes so therefore i mean uh, therefore if you speak to any of the children here in english they will reply to you it won't be grammatically correct 
may not be grammatically correct but they will reply to you in english they are not afraid to talk you and i whenever we look at a language suppose we are asked to speak french even if we are learning french you will hesitate you will say oh my god how can i speak french right but these children don't have that and if an outsider comes and speaks to them in english they are willing to converse very easily Project days, national seminars, the teacher training program. Correct. As a resource center, a training center for teachers. Correct. So multiple things happening in the day. Correct. So how do you get the involvement of your kids in all these programs? How do you ensure that? See, I don't have to ensure their involvement at all. For example, we are having a Swanubhava program happening in a, uh, in, a, in the next week, a couple of weeks from here, which is a cultural musical extravaganza. Now, the minute I said Swanubhava, the excitement is palpable. They are all waiting. For Swanabhava. They are all waiting to see all those uh, exposures. We are going to have Poikal Kudurai, we are going to have Bharatanatyam, we are going to have uh, uh, what? Uh, a, a drama in Tamil. So many things are happening. It's a two day thing where 700, 800 children from different schools in Coimbatore and outside come here and spend time. Right? So, last time we had 900 children on campus for those two days. So, it's a, uh, and the national conference again. The national conference idea is that uh, we should share. The whole idea started in 2014 with my mother when there was this horrible murder of a teacher by a student in class in Chennai. And how the boy had slit the teacher's throat because she had punished him or asked him questions about the homework or something. So, we started this thing, a debate about how empathy should come into education. And then every two years periodically we have this conference where we call, bring teachers from various parts of the country. There are debates, there are workshops, there are uh, discussions and all of that happens. And the project day is our key uh, you know, uh, event for Vidyavanam. Project day is usually in December but October, November, December which is the shortest month we have a project term. So we pick on any theme for the last theme that we did was food. So food, just not Tamil food, just not Malayalam food, just not uh, uh, Rajasthani food, but the food from across India, across the world, different types of cuisines. How do you connect that to your social structures? Because food determines social structure, right? So if I, if I say I'm a fish eater, I can be from two states in India, West Bengal or Kerala where the, its primary fish is the primary food. So straight away I have a social structure there. Okay. Similarly, we connect all of that. Then we do, how is it connected to mathematics? How is it connected in terms of volume, in terms of ratios? When we mix something in, uh, in food, when you make rice, how much of rice do you pour? How much of uh, water do you pour in it? So there you have a ratio proportion there. So all our mothers and our uh, uh, cooks are doing ratio proportion without realizing it's ratio proportion. So that's how you connect to subjects. And what's the role of the kids in the organization part of all these programs? Well, uh, national conference kids really are not involved. Um, some of the senior teachers are involved in things like that. But in Swanubhava, they will be mostly involved with the registration, with uh, food, with the various aspects of that uh, thing. In uh, project day, it's all kids. The organization, the setting up of the stalls, making the models, uh, making the charts, with the guidance of the teachers, everything is done by the children. So in project day to actually make the stuff, we uh, teachers don't do anything, neither do the, the parents. Right? It's all up to the kids. It's all up to the kids. And whatever the kids present, we present it on project day. It can be wrong. It can be, you know, if an outsider looks at it and says, oh, the kid is not speaking proper English. I'm not bothered as long as the kid can tell you what it is talking about. <coughs> then what about the involvement of parents? And Yes, we do have pockets of some parents who get totally involved in uh, the project day, in the annual day program, which is another huge event for us, which happens uh, where we do all the cultural programs there. And uh, so the parents get involved in that. But not like a city school does, because one, they're all uh, working, they're all uh, laborers or they're all shop, small shop owners and all that. The other thing is that, um, 
there's no investment from them as in terms of money or anything like that so we sort of provide everything so they come in here to help um, probably make up the children probably tie their stuff help them to wear their dresses this kind of thing they do and whenever we need a vehicle to be organized they all get together and organize the vehicle to transport them so on and so forth so that kind of involvement is there do you have any kind of parents teachers association or we don't have a parent teachers association we have our parent meetings are very informal meetings the party will use, usually address the whole group of parents and then they will go on uh, during the report distribution they will come and meet the uh, individual class teachers even our reports are not so much oh he got 60 percent he got 61 percent no we will never discuss the marks with them what we tell them is yes there has been an improvement there are certain areas in which there is thing and it is not only academics it's be very behavioral driven uh, you know what are the kind of behaviors that is displaying and so on uh, so these are uh, uh, these things make the parents some parents feel you know very uh, scared of these kind of meetings because they don't know how their child is progressing tomorrow if he goes to another school will he get admission there but I can tell you two of our batches have passed out and I've got admission in JM Foundation here in Coimbatore and they've got Fent as the well, most well behaved bunch batch they've got the name there one of uh, in one batch one of the boys is the school people leader there his uh, classmate who also studied here is the assistant school people leader so you know Vidyavanam has uh, just uh, we brought out these uh, two batches and our third batch is also the children whom you're going to talk to they're the third batch of students they are going to uh, you'll, you'll see how they are as far as they're concerned yeah about the parents, uh, it's like Vidyavan is providing some kind of livelihood by giving them some sort of activities and all. Correct. So, see, we have a certain a group of parents who have started something called Pasumai, which is basically to make these bags and be, uh, bead necklaces and uh, earrings and things like that. So, we've been participating in some exhibitions. Uh, we have uh, sort of displayed in the Lit Fest that just finished, Hindu Lit Fest that took place in Chennai. They went and participated there for three days. So this is as an additional income generation opportunity for those sets of parents. So they have a self-help group which they have formed and then through that self-help group they do it. Uh, Vidyavanam is not involved beyond the fact that they are our parents. So it runs as their own independent self-help group. So it gives them a lot of empowerment to uh, go forward. An educational institution, especially an alternative education institution coming to a very rural kind of area and alternating the whole situations of the area. Correct. How you, how you consider it by yourself? Uh, if, are you asking me for my opinion or? And, oh, it's, it's like uh, it, it was uh, your primary motto to do like that or you... See, the, the question, wa question is, we are looking at this as alternative. Yeah. Why can't this be the mainstream? That's the question we should ask ourselves, right? It's sad that we are calling ourselves alternative and not the mainstream. Because this should be the form of education that children should have. I'm not talking about Vidyavanam, I'm just talking about the philosophies in which it is based. The fearlessness, the questioning, the critical thinking. We don't need to teach physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. With smartphones today, every child can log on to Khan Academy and, and do their work. What we need to do is to teach them how to think critically, how to problem solve. Even at our homes, if I have a problem between my father and mother, if you have, between my brother and sister, I don't use physics principles. I don't use chemistry principles. I use simple problem solving techniques, simple negotiation techniques. Every child talk to every parent is a negotiation. If my son calls me today and says, Appa, I need uh, 1000 rupees to be debited and put into my account. And I tell him, I gave you 1000 rupees last week, what did you do with it? I have started a negotiation process. Right? So, th everything is a negotiation. We don't teach these children this. Suddenly, when they go into corporate, you talk about what uh, uh, critical thinking, thinking outside the box. Thinking outside the box will not land on your head. You need to be trained to think outside the box. Otherwise, it will not happen. What's your next venture? Like uh, every day, it seems like you're evolving with the game. <laughs> we don't know. There are many things that are happening. Uh, many things that are. One thing which we are thinking of seriously is a completely cultural center. 
where we are going to promote art, all forms of art, whether it is uh, fine arts or whether it is uh, music, dance, everything. And we are trying to, we already have one venture which is mobile art, which is Vidyamanam buses go into the villages on Sundays with paints and with newspaper, with paper goes and parks in the village in, a, in an area where there's a trees and all that and we get the village children to come there and just do random painting right no questions no restrictions you do whatever you want they spend in that activity two hours every Sunday one the next the week after that in the next week we have music so they go they sing the children participate they sing their own songs we sing songs for them we learn across like that and one more week we have drama. So we have a drama teacher who comes, takes them and... The kids all with your kids along or... Uh... Yes, a lot of our kids want to be involved and a lot of kids come from those areas. So they already know that, you know, Vidyavanam is there. And the parents there are our biggest uh, promoters of this project because Vidyavanam has established a name in these villages. So the minute we say Vidyavanam is doing something, they are aware of the quality of the work that goes on. Okay, for the final question, like, uh, what do you think is the feedback, the change of the feedback from the villagers out here and the other people, your parents, uh, maybe the most educationalists out there in Kerala uh, from other states and all? Correct. Um, well, we've had, so far we've had a lot of positive feedback. Uh, positive feedback not, in, uh, not essentially in terms of the child's academic performance, but more in the child as a holistic individual, right? As an individual whose behavior has changed, whose, whose outlook to life has changed, whose um, aspirations have changed. Like, you know, you're going to be talking to three children, right? With three different aspirations. And you'll be amazed at what their aspirations are. One wants to be an automobile engineer, one wants to be a Carnatic vocal musician. There's another girl who, whom you've been talking to, she wants to be both a doctor and a dancer. Right? So, these are the aspirations those, those children have. Whether they'll achieve them or not is not my point. I've given them the pathway. To take the pathways is theirs.